I wanted, to, I wanted to go to, to a little bit more of a specific topic, and and it's 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 one thing that I heard you you, you preach on. I think maybe about a year and a half ago. Sure. Um, that I had never heard anyone have the guts to say sure. uh, from the pulpit, um, or or really cover in this way. And I think it was around the time of uh, there was something that was happening with uh, either Roe versus Wade or something like that. Yeah. And you and you you kind of put it like this that if you're if you're going to be a one issue voter, yeah, then and and if you believe that life starts in the womb, yeah, there's th that's the issue to be a, yeah. a one issue voter on, right? If there's this mass genocide going on, yeah, maybe you can kind of unpack that and explain that a little bit. Well, I think I have, I don't think I have deep, deep, deep convictions intellectually and spiritually and biblically with abortion. And, and I think when we talk about abortion, we never need to talk about abortion in a way that we wouldn't talk about abortion if we were sitting across the table from someone who had one or who had paid for one or forced one on uh, a girlfriend or wife or, or whatever. So I, I want to, with compassionate conviction, address this subject. And, and so I do it every year. So uh, at least once a year. Um, and then on, on big years where it voting, I almost always want to talk about how, how the Christian should approach um, politics. And so um, in, in this issue in particular, I, I think I want to be real straight about the fact that you can be pro-life and be completely incompetent as a politician. I mean, you can literally just be pro-life and have no business being in public office, N no business being in any kind of leadership role or, but, but at the same time, um, at, at the same time, we must not, if we believe what the Bible says about when life begins and what life is and the, and, and listen, even let's, let's do this because I don't know who all, even if we just want to look at this scientifically, um, let, let, we can even walk away from the Bible. If we can just look at it scientifically and science now, I mean, you, you have the arguments around abortion are starting to change. Uh, even in, in the sermon I preached last year showed this in kind of secular articles and medias where science has now proven, hey, this has a heartbeat, this has brain waves, this kidneys are functioning, breathing, this little baby is. And so now it's whose life is more important kind of argumentation, which hi historically speaking is crazy. Hmm. Um, and, and so if we believe that, believer, unbeliever, Christian, not Christian, if we believe that life begins at conception in the womb and science backs us up, and I believe it does, than to vote for someone who actively advocates for the murder of human beings is unconscionable. I mean, I just think it's madness. And so now the tricky part, the more, the bigger ethical dilemma is what happens when both candidates support choice over. Um, and so in that, in that moment, I, I, I don't think the Christian, the believer should ever retreat from the polls. Um, I, I think you've got to find the one who has a better position on the issue. And so um, if you don't have one that wants it all gone, but you have one that wants it to be more difficult to get, then, then I think we back that guy in, in viewing the whole of his political abilities or her political abilities, either way. I think one of the things that, that really did stand out to me in that sermon is You've been pretty open. You're, I mean, you're not, you, you don't talk politics from the pulpit. Rarely. And in, you know, I think that would, that, that would surprise a lot of people given where you are. You're in the, you're in Dallas, yeah. you're Texas, you know, everyone here has, you know, you know, you know, a card carrying Republican with a gun, right? Sure. And how do you, uh, first of all, why have you guarded against that? And how do you guard against that? Yeah, well, first and foremost, what I want to do is, I don't, I don't think either party, just to be fair, and we'll just let, you know, let the comment sections continue. Um, I, I don't think either, either party has kind of dialed in on God's view of human flourishing. Uh, and so I feel like if I'm, if I'm going to take a party line in regards to politics, uh, I'm going to not be able to appeal to the sensibilities of the other party members. And, and just, and we're seeing this right now. We're seeing they just can't work together, can't even think. You almost stand against it because the other is for it. And, and I think when you're talking about what the Word of God has to say, there's no space for that. Uh, and so I, I won't back a party, but I, what I will do is show you from the Word of God what's right, good, and true 
according to the creator of all things. And so like if you, if you take when, when I tackle um, life every year, so anytime I tackle life, like everybody kind of goes, oh gosh, everybody brace for the emails, brace for the, you know, brace for somebody to get frustrated, brace for, and it's never happened. Like if anything, across the aisles, I mean, I've just got affirmation. I've got a brother that was bold and helpful, even from, you know, our, here in Dallas, our small little group of Democrats. Um, uh, one guy in particular that, gosh, he gets so razzed here, but uh, I mean, they'll like put stuff in his yard and I'm like, brother, you're gonna get vandalized. But, <laughs> but even, even in my conversations with this man, his name's John. I mean, John was like, that's, that's one of the best messages I've ever heard. And, and so now if I would have made that a political issue, then, I mean, I guarantee he'd have felt isolated. He'd have felt, um, and so I, I'm just not gonna get in that world. What I'm gonna do is preach from the word of God, God's command on us to be generous towards the poor and the needy. I'm going to um, preach that the, the gospel would drive us to care for the um, widow and orphan in their distress. And I'm gonna preach life and, um, and on and on and on. And so, uh, ultimately, I found that by being a Bible man rather than a party man, that I, I can preach truth into both parties. Right. And so the second I think I had self-identify, then, then I've just, I've demoed that bridge. Yeah. Um, but I, at the same time, I want to say, be involved in the political pop, you know, process. Right. Don't, you have a Christian responsibility to be a good citizen. So you need to know what the issues are. You need to, like, I'm hopeful, very hopeful, that at the time of this, our church is aware of how huge of a week this is with the Supreme Court, you know, got, having just a bit of a session left, you know, by the end of the week, and we'll have massive decisions rolling out this week on the on uh, Hobby Lobby and their, you know, argument of conscience against having to pay for um, abortive medicines for their employees. Um, that's gonna be a huge, so I'm, hopeful that the people of the village church know that are prayerful about that and and just are dialed into what's going on in in regards to um politics in this country